What's up guys? Thanks for stopping back by the channel, The Auto Shop Life. So, today I told you guys we're going to do it. Quick business side video, uh, kind of gathering my thoughts on, uh, you know, obviously I do these videos. You guys out there thinking about getting your own shop or, you know, letting you guys know what all is entailed of, you know, running a shop. But we're going to get one out there for you guys on the business side about shop owners that has to sit on money. Check it out. Shut up and sit down. Alright guys, so jumping right into it, I've been gathering my thoughts on this video for a couple weeks now, um, just wanted to get everything together, you know, things that, uh, you know, I have come across, the amount of money that it takes to run a business in the background, you know, and that's, you know, sitting on inventory, sitting on returns, sitting on stock, sitting on, you know, it, it takes a little bit more than, you know, just a car come in and you order their parts right away or have the customers pay for a part you know you have to sit on inventory you have to sit on those parts waiting on those cars to come in waiting to get your return on the money you spent on them so I mean another good example is obviously you know stocking all the right oil for the cars that come in you know I buy oil in bulk I buy oil in you know jugs I buy synthetic oil I buy a couple different brand oils like some of the top ones mobile one Castrol you know things like that for those cars that come in or those customers that come in that like to use that oil I have to have you know a good stock supply of it and a couple different ways to take care of those oil changes on the fly you know I can't have a customer sitting here you know half hour 45 minutes waiting on the oil to get here if, if I order it I'd like to have it on hand same with the filters you know a lot of different I work on all the manufacturers so there's a lot of different filters involved obviously I gotta buy those filters you know I sit on some of those filters I'll sit on for a long time. I mean, I had filters that I used to sell like crazy, and then all of a sudden, you know, GM decided to change the design of their filters, and I don't really sell those filters anymore. So, you know, sit on them for a while. When they become not popular, maybe you could take them back, you know, send them back to your vendor for a credit, but that's money I'm sitting on. You know, another big one is returns. You know, whether it's a defective part, or whether it's the wrong part, or whether, you know, the customer backed out of the deal, or something like that. You know, I'm sitting on you know my return shelf has stocks of parts sitting there that you know either are cores or that I had to pay for or customer returns or defects or parts that came in that may have been wrong or parts that came in that I'm still waiting on cars to come in and the customer hasn't showed up yet you know so there's a lot that goes into it also there's the different brands of coolants I gotta sit on for all these type of cars you know I mean I sit on about maybe three or four different ones but there's even more than that I don't necessarily stock those brands I stocked the you know the top three or four but you know I sit on cases of the stuff I used to buy it in the 55 gallon drums but you know that takes up too much space have enough stuff laying around you know it's kind of a pain so you know I buy the stuff by the case you know so I'm sitting on cases of that stuff sitting on power steering fluid on the cars that still take power steering fluid and there's a couple different kinds of power steering fluid not just one kind trans fluids another big one you know obviously you can't my shop I don't sit on all the brands of ATF but you know I sit on a good majority of them anything vehicle specific obviously I'll get at that point in time when I'm selling the job but you know I like to sit on that stuff too you know and it's all this stuff that you gotta buy you gotta make sure you know your shelves are packed and make for, sure you're ready for these cars that come in so when, you know when these customers get there as a shop owner you know you're ready to roll you're ready to get their car done you know you got them taken care of and and the nice thing about it is you know selling inventory that you, you sit on it's nice because you you know you could take some of the profit you could restock your inventory you know then you finally do make money on it and then it kinda you know you'll make even more the next time and the next time and the next time but the first initial starting off you know if you're kicking off a shop and you're going to stock a shop you know you get ready to spend more and you know going back to like I said and the bigger the shop the more you're gonna to have to spend you know I like to sit on brake lines I'm sure you guys seen in some of my videos you know I do a lot of brake line repair fuel line repair I like to sit on those things you know I don't want to be met, getting a car pulled in have a customer waiting or something or you know have a bay tied up waiting on you know brake lines to come in you know bulk hose I like to sit on different diameter you know three eighths five sixteenths half inch you know I like to sit on some of that stuff for quick repair vacuum repair things like that whatever it is the hose clamps I like to stock up on 
you know, the washer fluid I like to stock up on. And you find these ways, you know, the way you buy it, obviously there's a different way. You could buy, you know, 55 gallon drum like I mentioned. You could buy it in the courts, you could buy it in the jugs, you buy, you know, what have you. You'll find that best way that suits you. You know, for me, I like to sit on, you know, mostly individual cases of it and a couple of reasons behind it because obviously when you're doing a customer's car, you know, they like to see the actual core of the brand you're pouring in there, not coming out of a bulk tank. You know, you could tell them whatever's in there, but, you know, they like to actually physically see the brand that's going into their car. And that's one of the main reasons why I buy them like that. But there's other ways of getting it. You know, and then of course the more you buy, the more you'll save on it, and the less money you'll have to sit on in inventory. But you know, the way I handle it is, you know, I like to buy it in the case. I don't like to buy. I don't like to stock, overstock things, but I also don't like to understock things. And then I just slowly have to go through and recheck things. Hey, is this selling? Okay, well I don't have to stock so many of those. Is that selling? You know, that's a job in itself to keep track of my inventory. You know, inventory that. I may have sold six months ago and you know it was it was flying off the shelf so I couldn't hold on to it and then now it just kind of dies down whether it's the seasons or you know manufacturers change the design or they're not using that fluid anymore or anything like that but you know we got to sit on these we got to sit on this return you know and then you know another thing you got tires sitting out there just sitting waiting to go back you got my batteries that I have to buy to make sure you know I like to stock you know, maybe 15 or 20 of the popular batteries, and I and I and I stock them in different types. I stock them. You know, you got your entry level batteries, and then you got a little premium, you know, a better premium battery that you know better warranties and all that stuff. And I use them to sell each other, what have you. But you know, I got to buy these batteries. I got to sit on these batteries, hoping they get sold. You know, I don't see I don't see my money returning money until I sell a battery or until they restock my batteries, and then I see what okay, what I sold, what I have. You know, you see you're returning your investment. Lauren, Steve working here and all that stuff, you know, they don't necessarily realize that. So, you know, us as a shop owner, we have to keep track of that stuff to see, you know, what's laying around. Like, per se, the other day I saw two tires, brand new tires that needed to go back sitting in the back that they were just sitting there. I didn't know what they were from, you know what I mean? It was supposed to be a return. It was never called in for a return. You know, that's just money sitting there. That's money sitting around laying in the shop getting dusty. You know, we got to stay on top of this stuff if we want to see a return in the money we sit on. You know, because obviously filling my ba my bulk oil tank, you know, that may take $500 to $1,000 to fill the, the bulk oil tank, you know, just for the regular synthetic blend oil that I buy. I don't see a return on that. You know, that's money I just have to sit on to get them in for oil changes. You know, there's really not much money in oil changes by itself. You know, oil changes are obviously the gateway to sell more products, sell you know, upsell, sell more things to the customer, check out the cars, inspect these cars. But, you know, I'm sitting on that oil. It's I don't see a return in that. That's pretty much cost of operation. You, you know, I need these supplies in order to function my business, to, to run the business. You need to have this stuff on hand. Talking about zip ties we have to sit on. Talking about brake clean, you know, RTV, the glues we need, the tape, glue, whatever, whatever it may be, hardware, any kind of hardware we're going to need, any kind of gaskets that are popular and I like to have laying around for exhaust. I mean, all of this stuff we have to sit on as a shop owner. You know, the PV blaster I have to buy by the cases. Gloves we have to buy by the cases. You know, any kind of mask protectant and things like that. Jersey gloves or tire gloves, just regular old, you know, not disposable ones. I sit on stock of stuff like that too all the time. You know, and then not even to mention, that's just the shop portion of it. Not even to mention up here in the office, the supplies in the office it takes that I like to sit on. Obviously paper to print out invoices for the customer, you know, ink for my printers. I mean, you know, having having the pens so they, you know, making sure you have the right pens. Not like I'm out there buying stock loads of pens, but I have to buy these pens and make sure there's pens here for a customer to assign for their car or me, you know, scratch down when I'm working, you know, writing up a car or, or invoicing a customer, you know, write down, have pens for scratch piece of paper and stuff like that. You know, a lot goes into it. You know, my merchant service credit card machine, I got to make sure I have those little rolls. I got to buy stocks of that. They make you buy and buy the case. It's like 75 bucks a case. I got to have, you know, buy one or two a month, whatever it is, maybe three months, four months, depending on and not every customer uses cards. But just small stuff like that. And then office supplies I got to sit on, you know, trash bags, you know, cleaning supplies for up front to keep the office clean. You know, you got to make sure you stay up on the toilet paper for the bath, for the customer's bathroom and the back shop bathroom. You know, just all this stuff. And then obviously, the bigger your shop is, the more money you're going to have to sit on. You know, and, and the techs that maybe work for you, 
not saying all techs do it, but you know, they don't care about your inventory. They, you know, I've worked for shops that had piles of returns sitting in the corner or piles of tires sitting on the corner. You know, it's not the tech's responsibility or the mechanic's responsibility to keep on track of the owner's inventory. You know, you have to make sure that the, as a shop owner that, the, you know, the inventory you're sitting on, the money you're sitting on, or the returns you're sitting on, either have somebody have a designated job to take care of that for you, or you as a shop owner has to take care of it yourself to look out for your own money. You know, but there's a lot that goes into it. You know, any given time, I could have, you know, 10, 20 grand sitting in between inventory, return, stock, things like that. And then getting back to, you know, obviously it's not the mechanic or technicians, you know, to keep on track of your inventory. I had a situation where, you know, we had a core axle. We did an axle on a Volvo or whatever it was. We had a core axle on a core. You guys know that obviously the core, the core has to go back in the original box it came in you send it back in order to get your core money back well the box got thrown out so you know I'm sitting on a hundred twenty five dollar axle that the box got thrown out I can't return it you know and it, the garbage man already came the garbage is long gone so I, I can't return that axle now you know you just eat hundred twenty five dollars or whatever for an axle you know and it's an honest mistake but you know that's something as a shop owner that you have to stay on top of you have to let that tech know hey there's a core on that make sure it gets back in the box or you know, hey, if we're not using these parts, put them on the return shelf. Make sure, you know, when I go to do my returns and I can call this thing in and, you know, see the part number and get my money back for this. Or else you're just sitting on it. I threw away, guys, when I did the upstairs, clean the upstairs, did the spring clean and all that, I must have thrown away godly amounts of, you know, extra inventory that I had that maybe fell behind the shelf or just got lost or, you know, dead part numbers, whatever, had superseded part numbers that I really don't even remember where I got them from, you know, let alone being able to return them, you know, that's wasted money. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to sell a customer, you know, a filter that's six years old or something that's got layers and layers of dust on it or, you know, I mean, these parts have a shelf life. You know, if you don't sell these parts at a certain time, there's only thing but to do is throw it out, you know. I used to stock alternators you know a couple alternators and starters and things like that not so much anymore it's just they're too different nowadays with these cars um, another thing I used to stock is uh, brake pads that was that was another big one and really what it comes down to it is I like this you know the space I have on the shop I like to utilize for what I like to use it for you know I don't want brake pads taking up a bunch of room my vendors ain't far from me when it comes to brakes and all that stuff and most of the time when a customer comes here for a brake job, they know it's a little longer of a wait. So I don't mind waiting on brakes, but when they come in for an oil change, you know, you want to get them in and out. You want to make sure you have all their fluids. You want to make sure you have everything you need to get the customer done, you know, on hand, ready to go. So that consists of you having to buy their stock and predetermine, you know, what cars are going to come into your shop to where you could sell that inventory to buy more inventory and then finally get a return in your investment. But <clears throat> that's just a couple of them, guys. I mean, off the top of my head, obviously there's more to it. You got to make sure you got the Freon for the free, you know, the 134A. You got to make sure you, you got, you know, the die that goes along with it. You got to make sure, you know, you're sitting on, you know, anything it takes to run a machine. I got to make sure I, I'm sitting on acetylene and argon for the for the welder. And I got to make sure that I'm sitting on, you know, the tips, the replacement tips on it. I got to make sure I'm sitting, you know, all this stuff that it takes in order to run a shop pro properly and successfully and get these cars done. You know, this is stock that you got to sit on. Um, you know, buying this stuff last minute is obviously, you know, I, to me it's, it's probably not responsible, but it's just going to give you a headache. You know, you got to sit on that money. Then you got the oil change stickers that I like to sit on. You know, I got, you have to do an oil change, put that little sticker in the window. <clears throat> Those little static stickers aren't cheap. You got to sit on that. You got to sit on the ink it takes to print it off my little uh, zebra printer that I like to use. I mean, you could hand write them too. That may be a little bit cheaper, but, you know, the way I do it. And some of the stuff you may buy you know, you're not going to get a return in your investment. It's just stuff that you have to buy and sit on in order to function your shop, in order to help your shop run successfully, you know, nice and smooth for you, for the techs out there, for whatever else you got working for you. You know, it's just a thing that goes along with it. It's what it takes to run a business. You know, it's the cost you have to pay in order to be a shop owner and run a successful business and have the supplies on hand that you need in order to function your shop correctly. So, you know, it just there's probably more to it. You guys, you guys think it any? Maybe leave it down in the comment section. But I had to get this video out there. You know, to make you guys aware that there's a lot of behind the scenes that goes on to being a shop owner or running a successful shop or you know running a shop that's ready to go and pre-plan ahead of time. You know, be ready for that customer that comes in or you know plan plan for work to make your job easier. You know, you got to sit on money. You got to sit on money in order to make money. So. 
But uh, just a quick one there for you guys. Um, you guys get any other business side video ideas, leave it down in the comment section. If I left any out as far as inventory goes. And as always, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one. Signing out.